Hello, and welcome to Polytoots. This is my first ever upload. Um, hopefully not my last. We'll see how this one goes. I'm going to be doing uh, an overview of uh, a tool that I use called 3D Coat. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you might not have. It's a uh, sculpting, retopologizing, baking, UVing, texturing tool. It's just, it's, it's an all-in-one jobby, and I think it's amazing. Um, I've been using it now for a few years. I've been in the games in industry for uh, a little over 10 years now, I think. So this little tutorial series will just be a brief overview of 3D Coat and how I work with it, its pr pros and cons. But uh, in this video, I'm just going to go over the rooms, what they're used for, and then we'll actually start to make this model and I will do the sculpt. I'll show you the uh, the quirky sort of voxel versus surface sculpting within 3D Coat. We'll do a retopo uh, and then eventually we will paint it. Uh, so you will end up with something like this. This is the sculpt room and 3D Coat sculpt room is pretty amazing. Uh, it allows you to sculpt with both voxels and the more traditional polygonal based sculpting. Um, the nice thing about working with voxels, uh, which is the uh, the layer style by default, is uh, you, you don't need to worry about uh, any weird geometry issues. Um, you can just make whatever you want, uh, intersect it with any other kind of voxel mesh, um, and it's just, it all just kind of works amazingly and I'm not covering most of what I'm doing right now it's uh am I in the right layer I am in the right layer so yeah if you want to put something in a layer make sure the root of it is actually available so let me just show you a little bit about what voxels can do um, this is a fairly primitive example um, just gonna come along here you can kind of just chip away uh, at a mesh and it just you aren't going to get any kind of issue with polygons not knowing what to do because the whole thing is made up of voxels and uh, maybe this is where the, the software gets its name from but the coat I like to imagine is uh, the sort of the coat of polygons that is automatically generated around uh, a voxel base so you can imagine here, we're looking at triangles or p polygons, but this is all, um, I mean, I was about to say on the surface, but that's a bit confusing considering surface mode. Essentially what's happening under the hood here is it's generating uh, voxels of your shape and it just layers a sort of a coat of polygons over that. So you can do whatever you want, and it won't care. It usually it won't care. I mean, uh, you're not likely to encounter any sort of weird issues where it won't let you perform a certain operation because it can't connect two pieces together or something like that. You'll you'll just you'll never have any sorts of those issues. Um, so that's a little bit about voxels. So after you've done your sculpt, you'll probably come over to the retopology room. And this is basically just where you make your low poly mesh and also where you do the UVs. Because um, you may have noticed that there is a UV tab up here. Uh, I won't go into too many details right now, but the UV room and the tweak room are pretty redundant. The UV room almost certainly. I'm sure there are use case s scenarios, but I've been using this software for years to make uh, professional game content and the only time I was ever in the UV room was when I was first learning 3D code and I thought well it's called the UV room so that must be where I do my UVs but um, the Re Retopo room has all of that f functionality built into it so you never need to go into the UV room you can do it all here um, yeah so retopoing and UVing in 3D code is one of my favorite things to do it's uh, it's amazing. Like sometimes it's almost the motivation to work. Like I'd want to get a sculpt finished 
so that I can come into this room and actually start doing uh, more traditional based modeling. Uh, I say traditional. Um, you can do, um, I guess, a regular based poly modeling that you would expect in uh, some other software like Max, Maya, Blender. Uh, but it's a bit fiddly. I would sort of suggest not to do that. Like the way that we do it at the moment is you have to select an edge and then you kind of hit a button to apply and then you have this transform tool which it's just it's just a bit of a mess it's not very user friendly in that regard but for just doing retopology around the sculpt it is amazing um, it's just it's just insane and they have also recently integrated uh, what was it called instant meshes I think it was called it's like a standalone uh, retopologizing tool uh, which is amazing for certain things, like uh, things that you don't really care about the topology of. For example, the top piece of this frosting was built using instant meshes, whereas everything else was built using the tools. And uh, all of this probably took about 15 minutes tops, uh, including the UVs. So it's, it's a really, really powerful room. Um, and the way that it handles the UVs as well is just amazing. I won't show it right now. It's almost like I'm teasing it for later, although you could watch any other 3D code tutorial to find out more about it, but it has a very uh, interactive and d dynamic sort of auto-updating UV system in that you sort of just mark down your seams and it just, it, it, it instantly just unwraps it. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It reminds me of um, software, I think it was called Hedus or Hedus Layout. Um, I'm not sure if it's still going. It was a standalone unwrapper that was way ahead of its time. Um, and now like in 3ds Max, you have something like the peel, which still isn't as good as the, uh, the headless UV thing that I was using. So anyway, that's your retopper room. And from here you would, uh, you'd bake all this information down and you would come into the paint room. Um, I mean, this room is pretty simple as not much to say about it. Uh, there's a smart material system, which is definitely worth a look, and we will talk a bit about that in the future. Probably not with the cupcake tutorial series, because there's really no, I mean, this is just hand painted stuff. You don't need to be diving into smart materials, but just know that smart materials are amazing, um, and you can make your own. Um, otherwise, it's just a, I don't know, it's just a standard uh, texturing program really. Um, you have your, uh, I'm not sure what you even call it anymore, a diffuse, an albedo, a color, um, and you can just turn these on and off if you want to paint only normals or you want it to paint only um, your sort of gloss or metalness, roughness, spec, I don't know, they have so many names nowadays. Um, you can change all of this to be, like at the moment I have it set up for a Unity workflow, which is why it's roughness, metalness. You can change that and um, I'm going a bit off track here, but you can also do things like when you export your metalness map, you can store the gloss in the alpha channel, which is what the uh, standard material in Unity requires. So that makes life a bit easier. There was a time where you had to export all of your maps and open up f Photoshop and paste things into the alpha channels of others and yada 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 but um, for the most part um, I've done so many models uh, in game where I've never left 3D code it's just been from start to finish like the sculpt, the retopo, the UVs, the bake, the texturing and then export straight into the engine it's, um, it's amazing and I wish more people were using it but uh, there we go preaching to a small crowd so this, this was a probably a rubbish little overview of 3D Coat. Uh, as I said, I'm not intending to go into details uh, with this video. I will. I feel more comfortable talking about things as I'm doing them, but I'm just kind of building myself up. This is my first video. I feel weird talking to a computer screen. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in modeling a cupcake or learning anything about this amazing piece of software, then uh, stick around because we'll be doing it in, I suppose, part two. So I will see you there. Thanks for watching.